Hi girls, hope all are fine. Today let us see the topic atmosphere. An atmosphere is a layer of gases surrounded in a planet that is held in the place of gravity. It is made up of nitrogen, oxygen and other gases like CO2 and orphan. There are five layers that is nothing but troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. This is the lay diagram of your layers. Troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. Troposphere. That is the lowest layer of atmosphere where organisms are living. That is human beings are living and other animals, other types. It is the region of strong air movement and cloud formation. The air in troposphere consists of 78% of nitrogen, 21% of oxygen, 1% of argon and 0.03% of carbon dioxide. The upper limit of troposphere is called tropopause. Tropopause is like a lid over the troposphere where temperature stops decreasing with height. That means if the height is keep on increasing, its temperature decreasing. This is the important layer because weather changes takes place only in this layer. The air ne never remains static in this layer. This is called changing sphere or troposphere. This is the diagram for that. Next, stratosphere. The second layer which lies beyond the troposphere is stratosphere. The zone separating these two layers is tropopause. The layer extending up to height of 50 kilometers and increasing by the temperature. In this layer, ozonosphere is formed. Ozone present in the ozonosphere prevents the harmful ultraviolet rays reaching from the earth, thereby protecting the lights. Ozonosphere acts as a protective umbrella for us. Stratosphere is a calm layer where relatively clean air is present. Water vapors is almost absent in this layer, hence clouds will not form in this layer. The air blows horizontally here, therefore this layer is considered ideal for flying air caps. This is the diagram for the stratosphere. Next, mesosphere. The layer extends up to a height of 80 kilometers over the stratosphere is called mesosphere. Temperature decreases with the height and reaches up to minus 100 degrees Celsius and low atmospheric pressure is formed here. The upper limit of stratosphere is mesopause. Here, falling stars, the other name is meteors, occur in this layer. The layer does not have any impact on life, but it gains importance because it plays a crucial role in radio communication. Sunlight passing through this layer converts the individual molecules to individual starch ions, that is ionization. These ionized particles are concentrated as a zone called D layer. This D layer reflects the radio waves sent from the earth. This is your mesosphere. Next is thermosphere. The layer above mesosphere is thermosphere, which extends up to 500 kilometers from the earth's surface. The temperature increases with height from mesosphere. The upper zone of thermosphere is ionosphere where ionization is formed. The electrically charged current flow in the air is a sphere. Since the radio waves are reflected back in the sphere from the earth, due to this reason, radio communication is possible in the sphere. In this layer, ionization of molecules takes place and results in individual charged ions. The process produces two bells ionized belts that is E and F layers. So these layers also reflect radio waves and hence influence the radio communication. In the upper layer, further concentration of ions are seen that is Van Allen radiation belts and sometimes called magnetosphere. And it is thus called as Earth's magnetic field and more influence over the movement of particles rather than Earth's gravitational field. Thermosphere has no upper boundary and gradually blends with space. Exosphere. It is the topmost layer of the atmosphere and extends beyond the ionosphere 
above a height of 400 kilometers. The layer is extremely rapid and gradually merges with the outer space. It has very high temperature due to radiations of sun. Gases are very sparse in this sphere due to the lack of gravitational force. Therefore, density of air is very less here. Types of wave propagation. There are five types of wave propagation. Here we can see the three types specifically. That is ground wave or surface wave, sky wave and space wave. First one, ground wave or surface wave propagation. Ground waves plays a practical importance that it broadcasts a lower frequencies that is medium waves, long waves and very long waves. Surface wave permits the propagation around the surface of the earth. This mode of propagation exists when the transmitting and receiving antennas are very close to the earth's surface. These waves propagate along the earth's surface and it must be vertically polarized to prevent the short circuit by the earth. Earth's attenuation increases as the frequency increases and hence this mode of propagation is suitable for low and medium frequencies only. At higher frequencies, wave attenuation by ground is more than the low frequencies. It is also called medium wave propagation and is used for local broadcasting. All broadcast signals recede only during the daytime. Next is sky wave propagation. The propagation of space and ground waves are limited by the curvature of the earth and hence communication over long distance of failed. Propagation over thousands of kilometers is exclusively performed by the sky waves or otherwise ionospheric waves. This mode of propagation where EM waves reach the receiving point after reflection from the ionized region called ionosphere which lies off 50 to 400 kilometers above the earth's surface and this mode is also called as ionospheric propagation. The ionosphere acts like a reflecting surface for the EM waves of frequencies 2 to 30 megahertz. EM waves of frequencies more than 30 megahertz are not reflected back rather than they penetrate to it. Mostly sky waves are suitable for frequencies between 2 to 30 megahertz. So this mode is also called as short wave propagation. The radio waves can cover a distance not more than 4000 kilometers since long distance or point to point communication is possible with the sky waves. So it is also called as point to point communication. Next is space waves. Space waves propagation plays important role for very high frequencies that is VHF, ultra high frequencies UHF like microwaves and for communication like TV, radar etc. In this mode, the electromagnetic waves reach the receiving antenna in two ways that is one from directly antenna to antenna and reflecting through ground form, Earth's atmospheric region. That is, it induces a phase shift of 180 degrees in ground reflective wave. Next is the wave leave the transmitting antenna at the same time but it will reach the receiving antenna either in phase or out of phase as the path traveled is different. At the receiving point the signal strength is vector sum of direct and indirect waves. Space wave propagation is also called as tropospheric propagation because Space wave propagates through troposphere. As the wavelength is too short to be reflected by ionosphere and ground wave which travel very closely to the antenna and as attenuation is very high. Space wave communication is also called as line of sight propagation because VHF and UHF and microwave frequencies is limited to the line of sight distance and is also limited by the curvature of the earth. Thank you girls for patient listening. Welcome. Thank you.